The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the uh, June, what is it, June 28th, Turnaround Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. And, oh, it's going to. But today, you and I, we're going to take a look at the circumstance of these markets, what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, and the reason I'm here, is to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in. Now it's not too soon, 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, 727-445-1044. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Turnaround Tuesday. It's the Turnaround Tuesday edition of the Traders Edge Show. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we have the Dow trade up 152 points. He's trading at uh, 17,292. S&P up about 22 points at 2022. NASDAQ composite up 67. She's trading at 46,61. Russell 2000 trading up 14 bucks. I guess I ought to call one of these a he. Nah, just out of respect. It's all she's. That's uh, the market. The stock market is nothing but feminine energy. I mean that in the kindest and most important way out there. But that's a whole other story. And if I tell you that story, then you'd absolutely understand that. The DAX closed up 178 points. She's trading at 61.40. The FTSE is trading up 158 points or closed up 158 points. She's trading at 61.40. Oh, you said, well, why? Why? Why is it feminine energy? Always testing you. And that is the role of feminine energy. It has nothing to do with gender. It has to do with energy. Testing, testing, testing. Right now, we got the uh, gold contract trading down about eight bucks, trading at 13 17. So, men, step up and pass that test every moment of every day. And I'm referring to masculine energy, not gender specific. You've got silver trading up eight pennies. She's trading at 1783. Lights recruit up a buck, trading at 4732. Off to the races. It is AutoZone. Lead the pack, $15, about 2% to the upside. Intercept Pharmaceuticals up $15 as well. That's up 11%. Amazon up 14 That's up 2%. Sherwood Williams painting the town green. That's up uh, 747 Flying high. That's up 2 and 6 tenths percent. To the downside, you've got Comscore Inc. off 20%. Ooch. Uh, Babcock and Wilcox Enterprises down 4 bucks. Raytheon down 3 Uh Vitrus in something partners out there down a few bucks as well. Uh, we'll try to take a look at some of those individual stocks. But the question of the day is, okay, Steve-O, what's going on in the markets? What's the message of the markets? So, you know, yesterday we spent a lot of time. Let's take us back a week ago today. We could take us back a week ago today, a week ago tomorrow on Wednesday. We could take us back to a week ago Thursday. And we go back to each of those days, and the market was on full throttle. Uh, the market was moving higher with conviction. All of the markets, they were moving higher around the globe. They had already kind of battled off the uh, fears of the Brexit. Uh, of course, unbeknownst to them, uh, it didn't exactly go as planned. But the markets were moving higher with conviction. That a week ago Thursday, before the uh, vote uh, turnout, you know, you had the New York Stock Exchange making new advanced decline. Uh, the advanced decline line was making new all-time highs. The volume oscillator was making higher highs. The number of uh, stocks closing the 52-week uh, 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 52-week highs was making higher highs out there. So the broad market, which encompasses international stocks as well, was off to the races. And then we had the Brexit. We had this reaction, which a lot of people are just, you know, when you tell yourself a story, if you tell yourself that story over and over and over again, you're going to start believing that story. Sometimes you don't want to always believe the stories that we tell. 
you want to believe empowering stories, not disempowering stories out here. Now, you step back to where we're at today, right? We had we had Cell Mortimer Cell, right? You can only watch Cell Mortimer Cell. It's a great movie, Trading Places, but you can't watch it every single day. And today, it looks like nobody wants to watch Trading Places. In fact, Trading Places perhaps is the best way to. Uh, identify what today really is about because it is the bulls that are now trading places with the bears out here. Now, this show probably should be dedicated to H.M. Gartley. Uh, you know, I always like that uh, that uh, that show. Was Room Two Twenty Two out there? Who oh, I forget the name of the characters in there, but again, that was when I was a young chap out there. It was a decent show. Uh, I don't know why I was attracted to the show, but uh, uh, Two Twenty Two was the uh, page in H.M. Uh, Gartley's book where he said to take advantage of an A to B equals C. He didn't actually use that language, but he showed the pattern. Uh, we just over the years, you know, have an interpreted. Uh, of course, we can thank uh, Mr. L.P. Larry Pesavento out there for really helping us with that interpretation and so if uh, so we're going to take a look at some of those patterns that have or are confirming inside the uh, marketplace because they have important meaning but first we have to start off with going back to the uh, brexit we've got to go back to the uk try to understand just exactly where they're at because if they're the leader on the way down the question is why are they the leader on the way up hmm something to think about Let's go take a look at the daily chart here for the uh, FTSE. What we're going to see is the closeout here. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, I hope that you are, you're going to see a little red line. You're going to see a black line. I want you to focus on the red line. Uh, not, this is no hocus focus dominocus. This is an important line. This is the type of red line that when the market gives it to you, you make sure that you are aware what side of the market did price close on. And you can see, if you're watching, it closed by a smidge in the actual number that the FTSE needed to close above in order to get potentially bullish again out here, uh, 61.3401. And the close was 61.4039. Nice bullish candle. We took a look at the different bullish candles inside of the FTSE out here. I'll just go ahead and put a, uh, I'll put a horizontal line. We can move it up and down, but... There we go. So, uh, in fact, let me get my cursor out here. That makes it a little bit easier. Look at all these different hammers that have formed inside the marketplace or other types of bullish reversal signals. It's back above it. You had this hammer candle that uh, formed right here on June 17th. That hammer candle was tested and rejected, I say. Now, the FTSE, of all the indices, if you were the one that truly believed that this market was just gosh darn all out bearish out here, and the leader to the downside was the FTSE, would you expect that the FTSE would actually be the one that is leading the market to the upside? Really? Let me prove that to you. And it's not really me trying to prove a point. It is paying attention to what the market is communicating to you and I. So the FTSE closed above an important red line out here. Let's take a look. And what do I mean that it is stronger than the other indices out here? If we take a look at the, uh, you're going to see a couple of different lines. These are Fibonacci retracement lines that are on my screen. Uh, from the low, by the way, the low I'm referring to is the February 11th low to the high inside the uh, FTSE, key reversal session out there on April 21st. You can see the price had made about a 0.618 retracement during that whole uh, Brexit shenanigans. Where do you think it is right now from its high on April 21st to the low of Brexit? we come back from this break, you're going to find out very close to Sweet 618. Sounds like a TFNN address. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, before we went to that break, we were taking a look at the uh, FTSE. We were looking at a couple of different retracement levels. Now, here's what I want you to focus on. We're looking at the retracement from the high that formed in the FTSE on April 21st. From that high, which was priced at 64.27 and changed out there, all the way down to the low on June 24th. Got down to 57.88.74. We know that it tested and rejected this hammer candle on the date of June 16th. That alone is a uh, bullish, not a bearish signal out here. And then we've got another one today. Now, from the top, to the bottom, where the FTSE got up to was very close to the 0.618 retracement level. The exact number out here is 61.83. The actual high today is 61.70. So just a few pennies away from being able to get the 0.618 retracement level. Now, if this market is going to turn down again, all right. Now, the what the point that I first wanted to make, and we'll go take a look at other indices out here. None of the other indices are even close to the 0.618 retracement level, as you'll see. So the FTSE, which is the weakest, the reason that was pulling the uh, markets down, the significant reason for pulling the markets down, is actually the one that's up to the top. Now, at a 0.618 retracement, that is where you can see reversals. So tomorrow's trading inside of the FTSE will go ahead and provide us with, well, it should provide us with the uh, next important chapter to the story. But if this continues to move higher, takes out 61.83, takes out 62.90, it's on its way back up to its highs, maybe to even take out those highs out here. Here, just as an example, let me show you the uh, Dow out here. We'll put up the uh, Dow on our chart. Now, in the case of the Dow, from low to high, right, you went from uh, about 15,450 up to the high. Now, 15,450, by the way, was down on January 20th, all the way up to the high out here on uh, April 20th. The retracement that took place, only a 0.382 retracement which is shallow hell out here. That is not much of a retracement whatsoever, right? I mean, that is, that's the least of the retracements. Some people use a slightly lower percentage number out there, but we're just going to use the 0.382 level. So not much of a retracement. Now, at the moment, we don't have a bullish reversal signal inside of the uh, Dow out here. We do have a Gartley pattern. No question about it. You can say, what's a Gartley pattern? That's pretty simple. That's where you get an A to B equals CD. That is a, a correction move. Um, in this case here, a correction move in a larger trend that you were trying to catch. 
Well, you've got that. That was the completion yesterday. Nice one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside, 0 0.382 retracement, lacking the required bullish reversal signal as we speak. Now, the way that the candle session closes today could go ahead and alleviate that. So watch the uh, close. If the Dow today closes somewhere around the 17.3, well, I'll tell you, if it closes uh, somewhere around 17.355, you will have a bullish reversal signal inside of the uh, Dow, confirming that a Gartley buy is in effect. Now, that's the Gartley pattern. But let's take a look at the retracement out here. The retracement, let me turn off the, uh, the one from the low to the high out here, but take a look at the retracement here. It has not even made the 0.382 retracement. So you see the U.S. index, if we want to take a look at the Dow, nowhere near the type of strength with regard to price movement all the way back up to the top out here. And here, if we look at the S&P 500, let's go take a look at it. Here's the S&P 500. Same thing. Um, we can see that it, too, made a 0.382 retrace. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Those are the green lines. That's from the low back in February to the high, most recent high. And we can see that today it also has not made it up to the 0.382 retrace. We can go indice after indice after indice. None of them, at least all the ones I looked at, are anywhere near the strength with regard to price pushes. Uh, that's not really a great... Uh, you know, great ad, but uh, with regard to the price movement, uh, as strong as the uh, FTSE. So we're going to really keep an eye on the FTSE because it will tell us a ton. It will tell us a bunch about what the next, what the market's next moves are. At this stage here, it looks like what the market's next move is is to continue moving higher, not just today. Not just tomorrow. It's tomorrow's Wednesday. Not just Thursday. Not just Friday. It can't on Monday, at least here in the U.S., right? Because we've got July 4th. But uh, to move on. But then when we come back from the holiday, it'll move up on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And then the next week, Monday, too. Now, every day it's not going to be a move to the upside out here. But at this stage, now, I mentioned Gertley, H.M. Gertley. And if we go take a look at the NQ, the NQ has been uh, weaker than the uh, Dow. It has been weaker than the, or ES Mini, been weaker than the uh, Dow futures contract. What the uh, NQ has done is this has formed a nice little Gartley buy pattern. Just needs a few more points to the upside to uh, pull, put in a, a bull sash a candle. If this can close above, close out the uh, contract session today at um, we're at 42.50. You're at 42.46.75. It's been up there a few times. If it can close at 42.50 or more, you're going to have a bullish reversal signal. You've got A to B. Nice seventh wave move, by the way. Price relative strength divergent pattern out here on the uh, trading session of April 19th. Makes a nice low, makes a little B line up there. About a, almost a 90% uh, correction out here uh, and has moved to the downside. Now, that is, by the way, you close above this uh, 42, what did I say it was, uh, 4250, you actually have a confirmed Gertley buy pattern out there. So you want to watch the close today. It would appear to me, now, is the market going to go ahead and close up at its highs today? I, I don't know. If, if we're requiring volume to be behind the move, then probably not. But I, I say, you know, chances are that it will. Not, regardless, we just know what the numbers are. We just have to watch them. Now, it also makes sense that the NQ is struggling to actually get above that level required today. If we go take a look at the uh, futures contracts out here, I'm going to blow up the NQ on my screen. There's a couple of things that we know. There's a couple of things that we want to pay attention to because there's a wall and the bears do not want price to get back inside that wall. And that wall, by the way, is really the bottom of a consolidation. And the bottom point of that consolidation happens to be the trading day of May 6. So the level that you are going to be watching as well is 42.65. I gave you a figure of 42.50. That would be phase one. That would give you the nice little bullish reversal signal. But when a consolidation pattern is broken, price, you want to see price, whichever side of the market, you want to see price come back, test that area. And if the move Whichever way the break of the consolidation, then you want to see it rejected. If you don't want to see, if it was a false breakout, in this case here, a false breakout to the downside, you need to see price get above the 42.65. If it doesn't get there today, at today's contract close, is that a big deal? No. It will be a big deal if it can't do it overnight, I would say, if it can't do it by early tomorrow morning out there. So that is, those are two price levels to be watching. If you see price overtake that, then the message here, just like the FTSE has given us a strong message, the message inside the NQ would be what? Couldn't bust them down. False breakout. What does that mean? 
That says you can run all the way back up to the highs. I don't give a gosh darn about this wide-ranging bar out here that was caused by Cell Mortimer Cell. An unusual event out there. Uh, not that it's not worthwhile. Not that it's not a huge bearish engulfing candle. Not that there's not resistance at the 4494 level because there is. But you ought to see price at least try to get into that 4495-ish uh, type of level if it can get back inside of the consolidation. And if we look at all of oh, the other two, I should say, if we look at the uh, ES Mini, ES Mini is actually back inside the consolidation. The number to be watching there is 2014. And right now it is trading at, well, it's trading at 2011. So we can see where price is struggling today. But we know the numbers. It's not that far off from being able to get back inside that wall out here. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We've got the Dow up 128 points. S&P is up 19. We'll be right back. Quiet markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got the uh, Dow up about 130. S&P is up 19. We're going to go out to Chicago and speak with Robert. Robert, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing uh, this afternoon? I'm doing very well, Steve. Thanks very much. Uh, great, great. Uh, now, we talked about Procter & Gamble, I think, last time. 
um, right. if I recall. So, uh, but remind me, what 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 do you? I think you're looking at this for a long term position. Um, uh, I can't I can't completely remember. Not a problem. Not a problem. So, Steve, I called you last week, and then the very next day, uh, Proctor did something. I think it was in the 23rd. It went above its uh, 83, 87, and I thought it had volume of seven and a half million. I'm not exactly sure. So, it did. Uh, can you look at the 20? I think it was the 23rd of June. Yes, and it then did. It... What I was thinking about doing was going long uh, Proctor, and what I'm looking for is uh, from. From what you said, that one of the things that I thought you said is that if it gets over to 83, 87 with conviction and with volume, uh, I might get a, an opportunity to uh, see this thing go up $13. I absolutely like did. That. Yes, I, I, abs I absolutely do. I, I said if it could clear that, uh, because what we were taking a look at, Robert, and folks, if you watch us on Tiger TV, let's uh, take a look at this. Let me turn off a couple of uh, things here for a moment. Let me turn off our profiles, because what Robert and I noticed when we were looking at this chart, and this is a chart of Procter & Gamble, we noticed this nice little consolidation pattern, um, very much like the, uh, you know, like, like our market out here, the stock market, the Dow, which has been in a consolidation for uh, 18 months now, I believe is the time frame. In the case of Procter & Gamble, it's been in a consolidation since the uh, end of January out here. And that's a uh, little rectangular box. And that way, when you see a break of a consolidation level, because um, what we looked at, Robert, were really a couple of different areas to take a look at a possible trade. One was if it could bust above the consolidation due with conviction. And we looked at the March 21st swing point, which had volume of 8.6 million shares. That was one of them. Another swing point that had on April 6th was 6.3 million shares out there. If it could bust above those levels with that type of volume, then it was telling you that, okay, a real breakout may be underway. The actual volume that came in was 7.3. So so slightly lighter than the uh, volume on uh, the trading day of March 21st out there. Um, you know, so a close call. Uh, that doesn't mean you couldn't take the trade. That what it would mean is that if uh, Procter & Gamble went ahead and uh, closed back inside the consolidation, it too was a false breakout, volume or not, which is exactly what it did on uh, Brexit uh, Thursday, June 24th. Now, did you, did you take that trade at the close or did you take that trade at all? Knowing that we were coming into Brexit? Okay. Uh, I, I didn't take that trade, no. Good, so I good. didn't do a thing. Yeah. Good. G great. Because, you know, that was a tough thing to do. The, the place to take the trade in Procter & Gamble from a consolidation standpoint is down in the 79-ish type area. May not get all the way down there because you've got swing points that you'd like to see it hit, which would be the April 27th area maybe around 80, 15, and do it with less than 7 million shares. So you got kind of like 7 million shares on the upside, 7 million shares on the downside, true consolidation pattern out here. Now, it's possible that uh, you've seen the low of Procter & Gamble with inside this consolidation area for the time being. And the reason is that uh, where the, uh, that, that so far, yesterday and today, we've seen it's a TAS market profile, which is priced out at 81.31. We've seen that hold as support. Um, but, there, you know, you want the odds in your favor out here if you can get them. And so it, the question I, I would say, I'd still wait for it to come down towards the bottom or at least touch, test the swing point from April 27th. If not that swing point, maybe the swing point from May 18th. And, you know, both of those have volume, 7.6 7 and 8.3 uh, 8 uh, million shares. You know, with it, with, because of the consolidation, I don't see any reason that you need to really try to jump on this trade early. I'd rather you, try, I'd rather you get it at, a, at, at the bottom of the consolidation. And if it busts through that, you know, you just kind of, especially with volume, you just say, okay, this thing could move. Because the consolidation, folks, is from about 79.50, we'll say, to 83 or $84 out there. So it's a decent, you know, it's a $15 is what we'll call it, consolidation out there. This, so is that, does that help, at least with regard to my eye on the charts out here? Uh, no, that's fine. Um, so I have no problem entering at eighty eighty dollars and fifteen cents, or even if I get uh, seventy nine fifty, um, I'll 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 take that. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah, take I, that too. I just think if you do that, you're, what you're doing is at least you're giving yourself a better reward to risk out here inside yeah, the trade. I'll do that, and then what I'll do is I'll put another. If 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 I don't get hit down there, I'll put another bid up at eighty four and and see if I get that. 
Yeah, yeah no, ab absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, the consolidation is going to stay within a consolidation until it breaks. And because of the volume pattern on Procter & Gamble, this is not giving you and I really much of a clue as to which way it wants to break. Same type of volume at the top that it has down at the uh, bottom. That's perfect. Wonderful. Uh, can I ask you one more? Absolutely. Okay, it's MPW, Medical Properties something or other. Sure, MPW, uh, yeah, Medical Properties uh, Trust. So is this a real estate investment trust? Is that what they, do you know what, what they do? I don't know. I think they run medical medical properties or something like that. I'm, okay. I'm not exactly sure. But it pays okay. a nice dividend, and, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, it pays a nice dividend. Uh, I, I think it yields 6%. Proctor yields 3%. You know, my, my attitude is... Um, there's no money out there to be made, so I, I do like having the dividend income coming in. So. Sure. Okay, great. And But you're not inside of MPW at the moment? No, I'm not, but I've been looking at it. Okay. So in, now, nice nice looking uh, stock chart, you know, from lower left to upper right, and certainly uh, Brexit didn't uh, impact this. So that is a beauty. That's a, uh, you know, that's another reason to go ahead and, and keep looking at it. What I, can, what I can share with you is that as this most recently moved higher, uh, this is on uh, June 14th. It was moving higher with less relative strength out there, and it gave you a reversal signal. Uh, just the opposite of the hammer candle gave you a nice shooting star. So your resistance inside of uh, this equity is the June 24th swing point and the high of that swing point, which is 1529. If it clears 1529, uh, then it says, you know, you could go ahead and, and pull the trigger. I would rather you at this stage here, it looks to me, just in looking at this chart here, because price is trading below Stevie's red line, which is 15 and a quarter, it looks to me like this wants to still pull back. Now, pull back to where is the question? And that's where we'll flip back over to this chart, and we'll say, you know, um, today it is it is taking on that swing point from June 3rd. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is, I said June 24th, yeah. So wait a minute, what? that's crazy. I wonder what was going on with that. Maybe did I uh, hold on a moment here, Robert? I apologize. Did I yeah, June fourteenth was the uh, was the session. Now volume. Let's go check out the uh, volume. That's the that's your shooting star out here. So June thirteenth, the volume on this is one point eight million shares, and today you're already one point three. You know, so it's looking pretty strong. I don't know what that equates to on a straight line basis, but. It seems to me like this thing could be taking out that resistance level with volume, but ideally. Uh, on an equity like this, if we take a look at those hidden levels of uh, support and resistance, the TAS market profiles are real nice. And so the real buy on this was just a few days ago at the uh, between 1355 and 1467. What it actually got down to was 1465 on that uh, trading session with light volume out here. So the question is, where do you buy it, right? Yep. I tell you what, just do me a favor. Stay on through the break. We've got to put this on a weekly chart to see what else we might be running into. All right? Sure. Okay. We'll be back with Robert taking a look at Medical Properties Trust. We'll be right back, folks. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Lyft has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Robert in Chicago. We're taking a look at ticker symbol MPW, Medical Properties uh, Trust out here. And we switched over to a weekly chart. Now, Robert, on the weekly chart, boy, it made a nice bottom down here uh, the week that began January 18th, so the beginning of the uh, year out here, when it completed an A to B equals CD pattern, very long term because it's a weekly chart. It's a pattern that began in May of 2013. Now, it's had just a straight B-line run up to a level that has acted as resistance on the weekly chart. That's at a price point of around 1550 Now, the first time that uh, price was in this area, well, not the first time, but uh, I'm going to go back to June, July of 20, July 22nd, 2013. So the week that began there, about 4.6 million shares that were up there. Um, and uh, price went ahead and couldn't hold that level, pulled back. The next time that price got into that 1550 level, it did it with volume, 12 million shares. Still couldn't take it out. In the very next week, which is the week here uh, that began February 2nd, 2015, you had the bearish reversal signal. You had a nice little bearish engulfing uh, candle out here. In fact, you had a, a nice, uh, over the period of the next couple of weeks out here, February 16th, the weeks began February 23rd. Third and March 2nd, you had an evening star. So you had two real sets of uh, bearish reversal signals up at this 1550. What that's communicating to you and I is that this is a significant level of resistance. Doesn't say that it won't clear it, but it's a significant level of resistance. Now, the January 26th swing point is another uh, level to be watching. That's got 12.2 million shares. We've done 4 million shares so far today. Um, you know, it seems to me like, I, you know, it's going to be close, maybe light in the way of volume because today, tomorrow, the next day probably doesn't have the volume. So it would seem to me at this stage here, you're way too close to a resistance zone to even consider a buy, kind of like Procter & Gamble. Um, and uh, so, so, so don't do it. If it breaks above this level, what you would be looking for is you'd be looking for this to make it all the way back up to the May 20th, 2013 level. So you'd have to look at a risk reward, which would take it to between 1611 and uh, 16, 1611 and 1773. Now, back to the question at hand, where is it that you would buy this thing? You know, it's probably not going to have much of a pullback. You'd like to say, let this thing pull back to 1316, which would be just nothing more than a 0.382 retracement. But perhaps not likely to do that. It may only pull back into, I'm looking on a weekly basis, something happened during the week of May 16th, and that's somewhere between 1354 and 1448. So if this area acts as resistance, watch as price pulls back to that area and then watch the volume as that happens. So that, that's what my eyes see at the moment. Does that, does, that make, you know, does that make sense or does that help you out or is there another question that maybe you know, my review kind of posed for you. Uh, it's perfect, Steve. Thanks very much. Could you, um, if I entered at 1448 or uh, 1450, if I was, where would you put your stop? 
Well, the way that I take a look at it, I would just go take a look at the average true range of the last 10 days. Uh, my subscribers have a, on the part of my newsletter service includes a position size calculator. Okay. And the way that you would do that, um, you can manually do this. Go take a look from high to low of right. each of the last 10 sessions. Make sure you account for any gaps out there and just divide that by 10. When you come up with that number, multiply that times 1.618. Then, you're, then you know exactly what your stop distance is. And whatever your entry price is, your stop should be equal to that stop distance. Now, how you really use that is you take 1% of your working capital. If it's $100,000, you take uh, uh, what you take 1000 bucks, and you divide $1,000 by whatever your stop value is, and that tells you how many shares to buy. And that way you're not, you're not over or you, you haven't overweighted yourself. The other caveat there is uh, sometimes... Uh, what it will tell you to buy is equivalent to maybe more than 30% of your portfolio. And in that case, I would say on an individual stock, don't do that. Stop the number of shares that you would buy at about 30%. Right. 32, 33, 34, not a big deal. But, you know, you probably don't want to tie up all your cap, too much of your capital in any one individual stock. So that, that's how I would be looking at it. The specific day where there was big volume, I would investigate this because what it had wide, it had a big volume, but not necessarily wide price spread. And it was the day of May 20th. So there were 38 million shares out there. I don't know what they did uh, on that day, but that's 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 where I was giving you that little targeted area. On the daily chart, the actual range is 1388 to 1414. But that could stop things in its tracks out there on a pullback. Perfect. If if it pulls back. Right, right. It doesn't seem Yeah, okay, great. That's it's about perfect, to, it's about to yeah, it's about to run into resistance though. We we can clearly see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Steve. Th thanks very much. Great analysis, book stocks. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks so much for calling. That was Robert in uh, Chicago. We had another question that came in. Great question. And was asking with regard to the uh, five-hour chart on the ES Mini. So let's go ahead and put this up on our screen out here. And this is what we know. And the question was, uh, with regard to the uh, Chapman wave counts, um, we're only in wave two to the downside. As we can see now, uh, what I because if we if we just start counting to the upside, what the uh, ES Mini did uh, didn't make an all time high, but it made a higher high during the uh, Brexit situation. Remember, uh, the market the contract closes at five five fifteen in the ES Mini opens back up because uh, I remember I went to work out opens back up. Uh, at uh, 6 p.m. And it gapped up. If we went to a 30-minute chart, I probably can show you that, right? Yeah, I just have to go back a week. So if we take a look at this. Will it show on the 30-minute chart out here? Uh, here is the uh, 23rd. Yeah, so where's the time frame out here? Right here. Here's the 4 o'clock. Here's the, here's the, here's the 4.30. Here's the, here's the 5 o'clock close right here. So it, 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 clo and it just, I guess it wasn't gapping. It didn't totally gap. Yeah, it did gap up. You can see where the open was. Because on the ES Mini, it closed at uh, 2113 and a quarter, and it opened up as the market came back. And I don't know what was there. I remember looking at it saying, huh, that's interesting. 2115.75. Now, that turned out to be the actual high thus far in the Mini, which was 2119.50 in this contract here that we're looking at, the uh, September contract. Now, what it did, oh, as long as I've got the 30 minute chart up on my uh, screen out here um, to answer, answer part of that question is. I didn't, didn't intend on doing this, but as long as we're here, we, we really should uh, take a look at it. Here's on a 30-minute chart, and then we'll go back to the uh, five-hour chart. What the 30-minute chart did here yesterday, and you and I, we took a look at this, right? We were noticing how at 11.30 yesterday morning, price was had, had been moving lower and doing it with less energy out there. And with regard to Chapman Wave counts out there, we love to sing like Stevie Wonder in the key of G. I don't even know if he sings in the key of G, but it sure sounds, it's sure fun to say that. Uh, maybe somebody, tell me. What key does Stevie Wonder sing in? In any event, uh, this Stevie Wonder sings in the key of G out here. And when you get to that seventh wave move alphabetically, that would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, number seven out there. That's where you can see a significant market reversal. That's where it gives you the best odds to be able to go ahead and enter a trade and place your stop just one tick below that low. Well, in this case here, the actual low uh, yesterday at 1130 was 1981.50, which it was met exactly at 1981.50, and that was at 5 p.m. last night. 
uh, as I was noticing this pattern unfold. This is a bullish reversal pattern out here, at least from an intraday, intraday traders perspective out here. And uh, was posting charts in the den, uh, providing uh, feedback with regard to uh, that we had a bottom signal on a 30 minute time frame on a 120 minute time frame it was right there at the 120 minute time frame was right up at the wall right up at resistance out here at this stage here as the es moves higher and it probably is going to make a seventh wave maybe it might be overnight maybe it's into the close maybe it's during david's show maybe it's tom's show out here i don't know but um we're gonna have to watch as that seventh wave i'm certainly gonna have to watch because i'm long the es mini but i think it's going to continue to move higher. We'll come back, take a look at the five-hour chart when we get back from this break. Steve. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EvaBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY, a periodic rate of interest, is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, Visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors join david white as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his power law vector indicator to identify the best trades the power trading hour next on tfnn <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go back, take a look at the ES Mini, trying to answer the question, which was with regard to the five-hour chart, which was, hey, we're only in a uh, second wave to the downside. Does the, uh, does the, my experience, does it need to at least get down to wave number four before the move to the downside is over? And, um, and I don't know that it does. Uh, 
here's the here's the way that that I'm taking a look specifically at the ES mini. Look, when a market turns, it's going to first turn on a shorter term chart out here. I actually look at 10 minute charts and 30 minute charts and make decisions off of off of those patterns out here. So we looked at the 30 minute chart, gave us a nice bottoming signal. Uh, quickly here, I want to pull over the NQ because we had a bottoming signal there as well, a seventh wave, a price relative strength divergent pattern, and we had the bottom. We had that low get tested the low that was formed at 1130 inside the nq just moved slightly lower at 330 uh, 1530, that would be what, uh, yeah, 330 in the afternoon to form that seventh wave. And then you had a nice little bullish reversal signal. It was right here on this candle session in the 30 minute chart. Wasn't until 2200, so what is that, 10 o'clock last night, where it actually gave you two real confirming signals that that was a really important uh, seventh wave move to the downside. And then we were likely to see uh, the futures continue to move higher. And uh, now your bottom, the the place to buy it would have been anywhere uh, with inside that uh, seventh wave session. You had uh, a couple hours to be able to uh, do that. But you had the NQ. You actually had the same pattern going on inside the uh, inside the Dow futures. I don't think it had a seventh wave, but it had a price relative strength divergent pattern out there. That's all that it really needed. Now back to the five hour chart. Here's what I'm watching because this five hour chart for me. Uh, ends at 2 p.m., the current candle that we're in. And as long as price closes above 2008.26, uh, I mean, it only moves in quarters, so really 0.2, really 50 cents it's, it would have to, then that's giving us a good, then price is above that red line out there. As long as price can stay above that, that tells us that there is a at least a change in trend for more of a bounce. Um, where is that? Where would that bounce take us? Well, then we come back over. We take a look at our profiles. If we're going to focus on a a three hour or five hour chart out here, because the other thing to be watching is when, if in fact price can close above 2011, uh, and it's trading at 2011.50 right now. If it can close above 2011, then it's back inside its five hour Taz weekly profile. Now, this weekly profile here is equally spread between the high and low. The point of control is right dead smack in the center. So it doesn't give a bias with regard to this box out here. So what it says to me is the next most important level to be watching in the ES mini is going to be 2033. If in fact, these things continue to unfold. Why do I say that? Because that is where we've got our weekly bottom of that weekly box. And that should be some pretty good uh, level, a pretty good level of resistance. Uh, for the ES Mini. So, uh, Z, that's how I'm looking at it going from one time frame, the 30 minute chart. We're getting close to a seventh wave. That's going to unfold tonight. So, if you're looking to short it, which I think that you are, then wait until that seventh wave forms inside of the uh, ES out there because it's not that far away. Um, uh, and then watch some of these uh, price levels out there for uh, confirmation. So, that would be uh, my take. Another thing to be watching, I don't know that it will happen today out here. Um, but uh, the VIX index, real important. The VIX index seems to be on its way down to 1884. I don't know that it's going to hit it today. Right now it's trading out at 1998. But if it gets below 1884 today, tomorrow out there, cash fish VIX index, well, you should anticipate you know, a market that's going to continue moving higher and the VIX index ought to pull back to about the uh, between 1597 and 1713 out there as it continues to move lower. It's really going to be at 1713 that will get a feel whether this market wants to continue to run higher for weeks to follow. That's right, weeks to follow. Sell Mortimer Sell seems to be a movie that is over. And that's thanks to H.M. Gartley, like the confirmed one in The Spies. Stay tuned, folks. Our favorite polar bear, David White, is up next. Then we got the Tom O'Brien Show and Andy Heck to take it on home. Have a great turnaround Tuesday. We'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.